Warm welcome to this talk. Now, in this talk, we'll be giving conclusive evidence of very high levels of DNA contamination in the mRNA vaccines. Why does this matter? Why does DNA contamination in messenger RNA vaccines matter? Well, it matters because that DNA gets into the cells. The lipid nanoparticles in the vaccines take it into the cells. From the cells, it can hang around in the cytosol of the cell, the cytoplasm of the cell, and it can also get into the nucleus of the cell, which of course has the DNA, the deoxyribonucleic acid, the very recipe of our lives, and it can contaminate that. Now, if it gets into our, our own DNA, that changes the nature of our DNA, and that is a mutation, and that's how we get cancers. And there's other mechanisms by which cancers can be caused as well. So this is giving overwhelming proof of DNA contamination. And that DNA contamination is probably going to lead to cancers in the future. That's why this matters. Now, I've just got off a video call with David and, and he said that there's already people trying to get this paper retracted. But as of now, it's in print. But it has been submitted to Senator Johnson uh, for the US uh, congressional hearings. So it's actually in the record, even if the uh, opposition do manage to get it taken down. This is the paper here. Quantification of the residual plasmid DNA and SV40 promoter enhancer sequences in Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna modified RNA COVID-19 vaccines from Ontario, Canada. So a bit, bit of a mouthful. But basically, quantification, looking at how much residual DNA there is from the manufacturing process, where these synthetic plasmids were grown up in E. coli bacteria, same as the bacteria in your poo, to be quite honest. It's they're called coliforms, the, the bacteria from the human colon, E. coli. Um, and looking at how much contamination is in these things. And I'm also going to play you some clips from David, uh, David's lab as well. Now, um, and you'll see David, uh, Dr. Speaker, working in, in his lab. Now, he looked at 32 vials representing 16 unique vaccine lots. And these data demonstrate that the presence of billions to hundreds of billions of DNA molecules per dose in the modified RNA COVID-19 products were present in those vials tested. And uh, these are the vials tested uh, here. He had a, a group of vials that uh, were tested. Um, as we say, 32 vials from 16 unique vaccine uh, lots. So quite a good sample. And he's also tested vials from different parts of the world at different times. David's become a bit of a world leading expert in this, to be quite honest. All products tested exceeded the guidelines for residual DNA set by the FDA and WHO of 10 nanograms per dose. And they were exceeded by 36 to 627 fold. So that's not a 36% increase. It's 36 times more than there should have been or others contained 627 times more DNA. Hundreds and hundreds of times more DNA than is allowed. And these allowances are already set way, way, way too low, in, in my opinion. The reason that the, the levels are set way too low is the levels, the, the levels set for the DNA contamination were set when it was naked DNA, just DNA on its own. Now the DNA is in these lipid nanoparticles that's taken into the cells hundreds, maybe thousands of times more readily. So actually the amounts of DNA contamination should be several thousand times less than they actually are. But even at the high levels of contamination that are allowed, still exceeding that by 36 to 627 fold. These are quite horrendous levels of DNA contamination in my view. We should have known this at the start of 2021 when I took some of this wretched stuff or mid 2021 when I took some. But we weren't told. Informed consent was not given. 
so uh, exceeded the regulatory limit by these huge amounts, these regulatory limits set by the FDA and WHO. And of course, the WHO is not known for being that stringent, is it? But it still greatly exceeded those. The Pfizer, it was 36 to 153 fold above the levels. The Moderna, it was 112 to 627 above fold times times 112 to 627 627 times more than the allowance three Pfizer vials exceeded the regulatory limit for SV40 promoter enhanced enhancement the original sequence and of course that works on p53 now what happens here is that this contamination this um, DNA contamination contains the genetic code required to make the SV40 protein from the simian virus. And this simian virus, this SV40 protein, once it's made inside the cells, inhibits uh, a protein called P53, made from our P53 genes. So we get less of our own P53 protein. Why is it important that we have adequate P53 protein and it is not inhibited? That's because this P53 protein inhibits cancer formation. So in other words, this SV40 DNA produces SV40 protein and that SV40 protein inhibits our own P53 tumour or oncosuppressor genes making cancer more likely. It's basically debilitating our body's own natural defence mechanisms, which is why it's so important. Uh, the PCR results for the most recent XBB 1.5 Moderna and Pfizer vaccines suggest... Uh, that the DNA residues have not been reduced from previous vaccine versions. So it's still there. Pfizer, the total DNA range from... Um, th this is the actual dose now, the actual amount. So in the Pfizer, uh, 371 to 1,548 nanograms of DNA contamination per dose. And you can see that's well over a microgram. Moderna, it was even higher. So the amount of Moderna, in Moderna, the amount of DNA contamination was 1,130 to 6,280 nanograms per dose. So you can see that's 6.28 um, uh, micrograms. We get, we're getting into uh, really quite high levels of uh, contamination. This is quite large amounts of DNA present. There was also specific DNA sequences, as we've said, like the SV40. Uh, in the Pfizer, that ranged from uh, 0.22 to 7.82 nanograms per dose. In the Moderna, it was 0.01 to 0.78 nanograms per dose. So both the specific DNA sequences and the general DNA sequences or contribute to the problem of the DNA contamination. And the way David explained it to me was you, you get billions, billions and billions of these short DNA sequences. And he said it's like a shotgun or, or a shrapnel effect. Some of them are likely to be integrated into the human DNA, which is the, is the problem. So relatively short... Um, well, this is, this is the SV40 promoter, which we already discussed. Particularly uh, worrisome in terms of promoting cancers. Uh, sequences, sequences in one vial. The mean length is 241 base pairs. Maximum length was 3,500 uh, 3, uh, base pairs. So small lengths, but because there's billions of them, we've got this shatter, shrapnel sort of shotgun effect that some of them are going to get into our DNA. Uh, probably and unfortunately. So the presence of 1.23 times 10 to the 8, so what's that? That's hundreds of millions, isn't it? 
to 1.6 times 10 to the 11, that's hundreds of billions, I guess, plasma DNA fragments per, encapsulate, per dose encapsulated in lipid nanoparticles. So hundreds of millions to hundreds of billions but because they're in the lipid nanoparticles, because all these, so that's the lipid nanoparticle there, and the DNA contamination is in this lipid nanoparticle. Now, if the DNA was just uh, loose, like free DNA, like the original regulations stipulated, it probably wouldn't get into the body cell. So imagine that's a body cell there. So the body cell, of course, has got a lipid outside layer. So this lipid nanoparticle will just stick to that like that and let all these contaminations go directly in. Whereas without the lipid nanoparticle, uh, the, not many are going to go in, or virtually none are going to go in, because this is fatty. But if you like, the lipid nanoparticle is kind of a Trojan horse that gets the DNA contamination into our own cells. That's why the amount that's allowed, which is specified for the naked DNA, is probably reasonable but that's been carried on to the lipid nanoparticle age where the allowances should in my view be a thousand or ten thousand or a hundred thousand times less uh, but they're not so uh, the paper says uh, our findings uh, extended existing concerns about vaccine safety and call into question the rel relevance of guidelines conceived before the introduction of efficiently transfecting transfection using lipid nanoparticles and transfection is the process whereby the dna contamination gets into our host cells it is infecting our host cells that is the problem this work highlights the need for regulators and industry to adhere to the precautionary principle and provide significant and transparent evidence that products are safe and effective and disclose the details of their composition and methods of manufacture is what uh, the paper is recommending for some of the covid-19 vaccines the drug substances released to the market were manufactured differently than those used in the clinical trials so we have good reason to believe that the vaccine doses or most of them used in the clinical trials would have much less, if any, DNA contamination than the ones that were actually stuck in my arm and your arm. Yet another part of the problem. So the rationale for the study, manufacturing nucleoside modified mRNA, uh, that is that the... Um, the sequences, the pseudouridine has been has been modified from uridine to pseudouridine. mRNA vaccines for commercial COVID nineteen vaccines relies on RNA polymerase transcri transcription of a plasma DNA template. So there's this synthetic plasma DNA template which is put into an E. coli bacteria, and the RNA is is taken from that DNA template. The DNA template is supposed to be got rid of, but as we've patently seen from David's work, it has not been got rid of. Previous studies identified high levels of plasma DNA in, vi in vials of mRNA vaccines, suggesting that removal of the residue, residual DNA template is problematic. In other words, it's not being done properly. The DNA contamination is still there. It's supposed to be taken out, but it hasn't. Therefore, we quantified the DNA load in a limited number of Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna COVID-19 modified vaccine vials using two independent methods. This is a very important point. The lab used two independent methods and got similar results. This study emphasises the importance of methodological considerations when quantifying residual plasmid DNA in Moderna RNA products. Considering increased lipid nanoparticle transfection efficiency and cumulative dosing presents significant and unquantified risk to human health. So the lipid nanoparticle transfection is working. People are also being given cumulative doses. They're being hit again and again and again. And that is posing unquantified risks to human health, which should be quantified. 
And David did also tell me in the interview that if he was given biopsies from cancers, whether biopsies taken during cancer surgery or biopsies taken at post-mortem, he could look at that and he could recognise spike protein DNA in the cancers and he could also recognise if there was DNA contamination from these uh, plasmids, these synthetic plasmids. So he has the ability to detect if their DNA contamination has got into cancer cells. But as of now, that work is not being done. Concerningly, he is currently working on potential transfection of sperm. So there we are, DNA contamination confirmed. There should be a monitorium on these vaccines. So this is sorted out for this reason alone. Unfortunately, no such monitorium is in place. But this is good science. But it will probably be ignored. By many. But not by us, not by me, not by you. So thank you for watching.